my name is Robert Biden uh, from GS1 Global Office. Uh, my role is responsible for retail globally, and that's a big sector for us, but in, it includes best living consumer goods, it includes fresh foods, it includes apparel, general merchandise, wine, spirits, in all of those countries you just saw. So, that sounds complicated. We're gonna make it really simple. We're gonna make it about Barry. This is Barry. It's the physical world Barry. That's the digital world Barry. Uh, we've heard so much today. It started with Gustavo and Nielsen talking about changes in consumer behavior. We had a couple of great panels that talked about the way businesses are trying to respond and then just summed up wonderfully by case talking about transformation from value chains to value networks, how businesses are responding, and ultimately the fact that we all need to act because things are happening very quickly. I was here two years ago. Actually, I was last, so it was perfect in the same slot. Uh, and back then, I was talking about uh, putting the consumer in the center and uh, getting supply chain right, and these lofty theoretical things. And I thought that we'd change things now and make it really concrete about things we can do to change the world. So I figured everyone here is here for one of these three reasons, if not two or all of them. You want to reduce costs, you want to create great consumer experiences, and ultimately you want to sell more stuff. If you're from healthcare, the first two are the same, the last one is saving lives and patient safety, but fundamentally, that's why we're here. And we've heard a lot today that says to do that, you need to increase consumer transparency. You need to increase the speed at which we do everything. And you need to grow trust between supply chain partners, uh, upstream and downstream, but also with consumers. That we all heard. We didn't hear the how. And so we're gonna spend a few minutes, not many, I promise, on identification, data, and event tracking. It's this core of what GS1 does that most of you know parts of Maybe you know all of it. If you do, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm gonna waste a few minutes of your time. But these three things are the core to increasing transparency, moving faster, and building that trust. And they're ultimately part of the key for every one of your businesses, whether you're a manufacturer, a farmer, uh, a, a multinational brand owner, or a retailer at a corner shop, or in a multinational chain. Can everybody see the difference? It's always dependent on projector. So on the left, the one looks a little shinier, a little fresher. The one on the right uh, looks a little older, a little, I don't know, dirty. Uh, but they're both orange, right? They're both the color orange. What we're gonna talk about for the next few minutes is two things that are also, at least today, looked at slightly differently. But my contention is that they're actually the same. Uh, my contention is going to be that digital is not just a great place to go to lose a lot of money, as we heard earlier today, uh, but that it's an opportunity, and it's particularly an opportunity for those businesses, again, whether manufacturer or retailer, who have grown up in a physical world of commerce. And we're going to go back to Barry. Everything starts with identification. Barry has a name. As you know, he's Barry. I'm Robert. Uh, this is Schwab. We all have names. And online, I have a lot of different names as well. On Twitter, it's at Robert Biden. Uh, on WeChat, I'm my phone number. And all of those are linked together, and they're, they're part of my name. And that's really important to me, because if I lose it, uh, I need to be able to get it back. It always needs to come back to my identity being me. And that's true for Barry, too. It's true for all your products. They need an identity that is as consistent in the physical world as it is in the online world. Because without that, it's just a bear, and there's a lot of blue bears out there, but none of them are as cool as Barry. And then it's about Barry himself. In the physical world, I can pick up Barry. He's kind of floppy. He's nice. He's about this big. He's soft. I can read about what's inside him. He does actually have a barcode. Uh, and I can pretty much tell by the ingredients if I'm allergic to them. I say that because Barry, in a lot of ways, is just like a food product, especially when we're talking about children. In the digital world, Barry is not that well-defined today by any of us. 
there's size, there's weight, there's some fundamental B2B facts that we exchange today. But we're not describing Barry from his source until his destination in a way that can recreate an experience that you get in the physical world when you pick up and hold Barry. And my contention is we have the data to do it. It's there. It's locked away in silos, in organizations. But bringing it out and using it and leveraging that data across your enterprises and between your partners can bring digital Barry much closer to physical world Barry. Most of you know that stuff about GS1, right? We have ID keys for barcodes or for RF tags. We have the GDSN, we have, uh, we have GS1 source, we have attribute descriptions for 3,000 attributes, all to describe Barry. But now we get to the more complex stuff and where GS1 can be leveraged in areas like inventory. In the physical world, it was pretty simple. Stuff left a warehouse and it got to the store and, and there was a transfer of money and the store owned the product. Today in the digital world, it's a little more complicated and so many companies grew up and decided when it was time to go online that they would make another inventory, maybe even another warehouse just to do online right. That's not going to last for long. It's not going to work. Single view of inventory has to be the ultimate goal for your entire enterprise. Uh, it has to be that because it's not about getting the goods only to the customer. It's not about getting Barry to the child that wants him. It's about knowing where Barry is so that you can do that well. Today, most people fail selling because Barry is not even on the shelf. He's sitting in the back of the room, back of the store and he can't be bought. Or, Barry is sold online, and you can't actually deliver the color of Barry, or the, si the size of Barry, or Barry at all, to the customer, because you didn't have that single view of inventory. And that's where GS1 can help. Event tracking of exchange of goods between warehouses to stores, to online merchants and marketplaces. And if you get all that right, then it's the shelf. We heard about people who have spent their entire careers being experts at merchandising in the physical store. A lot of us are here. We've come from the physical world of retail. Getting the digital shelf to be as similar to the physical shelf as possible is the key. If you can put Barry on the shelf in all the colors you have available, if you can make him easy to find online, because it's much bigger than walking down the store aisles, you can win the sale. But how do you do that? You have to take all of that identification, all of that data, your knowledge about where Barry is in the supply chain, and make it visible to Google, to Yahoo, to Yandex, to Bing, to all of the search engines out there in the world. And how do you do that? GS1 can help you there. A little standard called Smart Search that takes all that data you've invested so much time and energy in, and through solutions offered by GS1 Portugal and all the GS1s around the world, bring that data to a higher level of visibility online. Win the, win the shelf. But it's not about getting it on the shelf, right? It's about winning those moments of truth, getting your consumer to put Barry in the basket. And to do that, we come back to promotion, which I've learned today is pretty important in Portugal. Uh, getting promotion right, making sure that a particular promotion is for Barry, or is for the certain color of Barry, or is for Barry that is only in certain geographic areas is critical. And that's hard to do today. So it's easy to overcompensate and promote everything. But if you can promote in a more targeted way, using the identification and the knowledge of where Barry is, you can more effectively work through the stock that you're keeping that you want to get rid of. Not only that, digital coupons, physical world coupons, all of that stuff, again, enabled by GS1 standards. But that's still not enough because digital baskets, those digital carts, are the things that are not like the physical world because they're abandoned all the time. That's something that's really different. This is what it's about. It's about making a sale. And even here, getting back to the power of standards is critical. In the physical world of checkout, uh, the world's been changing. 2D barcodes are coming. 
which is the first group I'm telling that publicly to, and I'm GS1, 2D barcodes are coming. If you're investing in new scanners, invest in scanners that are optical, that can read 2D codes, because that future is going to be our reality soon. And those scanners will enable you to create much more intimate experiences with your customers. In the digital world, use those images you've spent so much time capturing. Use those identifiers on your confirmation emails, on your receipts. Bring that connection so that people know that when they clicked buy, they're going to get what they think they ordered. Here's one that was very different in the physical world and online. There's Barry on the way home. That part's easy, right? Out of the store, decrement the stock, it's very simple. But online is different. Click and collect, lockers, uh, ship to home, ship to the office, same day delivery, same hour delivery. The world's changing. And it may not be changing exactly at the same pace here as in the UK, like we heard earlier, but it's changing. And those fulfillment options require you to know where Barry is, in what color, you need to know the data, you need to know the inventory, and you need to know how fast it has to get there. Again, foundation of it all, GS1 standards. I don't know why anybody would want to return Barry, <laughs> but I had to talk about it. That's the saddest picture of the whole slide deck. In the physical store, uh, returns used to be easy because the stores owned the inventory once the store got the inventory in, in most supply chains. And so when the bear came back, it was, it was a cost. Now stores can cross-ship Barry, stores can ship them back to warehouses, consumers can ship Barry directly to a warehouse of your choosing as the retailers. Combining that with the knowledge of your stock locations, you can put Barry back on into, onto a shelf exactly where you want it. That's powerful. And again, it's on the same foundation of using identification, good data, and event tracking. We heard a lot today about analytics, and Case mentioned it as well. Uh, the power of, of analytics and being able to be more predictive. In store, reams of paper each week, processing trends and velocity of sales, and figuring out how to merchandise the next day or the next week a little bit differently. Online, there's so much more available to us, but that stuff won't work either unless it's connected back to your business through the same identification and the same information that you use to get it out to your consumer. The last one, maybe the most powerful part of it all in the physical world is the word of mouth. That's how our brands are built. And when I say brand, I don't mean the brand of the manufacturer. If you're a retailer, you have a brand that's critical to your business. Uh, if you're a farmer, you have a brand. If you're a wine producer, you have a brand. Those brands have become as strong as they are today because of word of mouth. Because people's experiences were either good or bad or normally very mixed over the course of time. And you worked to navigate and create your brand and now that other one in the digital world has a chance to either help out a lot or really hurt. Make it help. And you can make it help by making sure that your customers are having conversations about the right product and the right venue with the right audience. Again, back to identification and data. And so GS1, this is the traditional GS1. We've been around for 40 years in this physical world. And there were a lot of pieces we just went through. Uh, but we've been morphing over the last few years to adapt to this digital world and, and spending a lot of our energy with you as a community and with the global community to blur the lines between digital and physical and certainly to make a system of standards able to work across those boundaries. We've been focused on all three of these. Traceability is a huge influence for us and focus for us now. Data continues to be critical and the most foundational piece is identification. We believe in the power of standards to help every one of us increase transparency, move a lot faster, and build trust even faster than we have in the past. And ultimately, we think that can help you reduce costs, create experiences, and sell more stuff. A few years ago, we coined a, a phrase, and it was the phrase that started this presentation and what I'll end with. 
The phrase is it's just commerce. We got all nervous about the online thing for a lot of years. And we, we at GS1, we kind of stepped back and looked at it and we said, it's kind of like taking off on an airplane or a rocket. The acceleration pins you to your seat for a few years, or a few years in our case, a few minutes. But then once you're up to speed, you don't feel that anymore. You're just flying higher, you're just going faster, and you're just selling more stuff. Uh, with that, I'm, I'm done. I just want to ask you to do two things. If any of this was new about what GS1 can influence, I, I want you to go talk to a colleague in a different part of your company. Try the marketing organization if they're not here. And bring them to GS1. Bring them to the new beautiful building that's about to be constructed. And find out more about what GS1 can do for you. Because you've built this organization. It's yours. Uh, you, should, you should leverage it for all it's worth. Thank you.